Hi everyone and welcome to my holiday 2022 collection video. This year we'll see the launch of my first ever, first ever, can't quite believe that, eyeshadow palettes. I'm really excited to show them to you. I'll also be launching five new shades of the iconic True Velvet lip colours. So for this launch there are five ultra chic and playful eyeshadow palettes in the most bespoke, slim, look how slim they are, and elegant packaging. Each one contains a curation of six totally harmonious and complementary shades in my own unique, easy to blend, high performance, microplastic and talc free textures. And each palette's color story and range of textures cover every mood. So whether it's just quite a natural day look you want or full glam, you've got it. The inspiration behind these palettes for me was that I wanted to really closely base them on the self-made palettes that I have within my professional makeup kit. So when I go on jobs, I have within my kit these enormous Z palettes and I have my real go-to shades and textures within each color group of complementary shades. And they are the colors and textures that I 100% rely on so that I know if it's a new client, if it's uh, an occasion that I'm not really sure what kind of makeup we're going to be doing, everything is covered. Another thing that I like to do on jobs is that sometimes when I'm working with a client that I already know, I will adapt my palette. So I might say, for example, I'm going to do a red carpet with a client that I've already seen her outfits and I'm thinking I want it to do like a smoky look but I'm going to add some purple in there or green in there whatever I will customize my palette so I'll take my my go-to smokies and then I will add in maybe from my other palettes I won't take the full purple palette but I'll add in like two purples a green and I kind of customize them like that and that's how I've always worked and for me that's the best way for me to work. So with that in mind, I wanted these palettes to be firstly a really good curation of shades, but also to be customizable. So for example, say you had this palette, which is obviously warm tones. I'm going to get to the names and the shades in a minute, but say you like, oh, I love that palette, but I really want to do, I want to add like a gray in there, or I want to add a different color, then you can just bespokely take out that pan buy a single pan and put your green in there or your purple in there or your gray, whatever. And I'll show you a little bit more about that as well. And they're also refillable. So exactly the same as my professional kit, there are certain shades that just seem to work on every job and nearly every person that I constantly find I'm running out of. It's quite funny because very often they're discontinued, so I have to try and make them in labs. So I've ended up with a lot of lab-made colours which are based on previous old favourites. So it's really nice to be able to refill certain shades and not others that you know you don't use as, as regularly. So each palette is totally refillable and customizable. So before I get on to showing you each individual palette, I just want to explain that I've created six different formulas or six different texture formulas and depending on the palettes it will be a different mix of which formulas I've chosen for the shades if that makes sense but I just quickly want to run over what the six textures are. The first one is called Seamless Matte and this is probably the most ridiculously blendable matte eyeshadow. It practically blends itself really <laughs> and it has a low level of luminosity so if you were to shine a torch on it, you can see that I've put in some very, very minute, tiny, tiny pearl within the matte. This just really, really helps to make it so effortless to blend, but it still gives you that matte look and that definition and all of that smokiness and, and defining quality that matte has. The next texture is another matte, but I'm calling it a velvet this time. And this one is different from the seamless matte, which feels more like a traditional powder, whereas the velvet feels exactly like a cream. So it's a cream, it's a powder that feels like a cream eyeshadow. As you kind of apply it, you can use fingers or brushes, but you can really feel that it has like almost behaves in a way like a cream, although it's a powder as well. And the reason I created the velvet texture is because I've often put it in as a sort of base coat color. 
and it means that as you glide it on it feels like an eye paint and it it's very very forgiving it's very very smoothing on eyelids so it has that matte look and payoff but with a creamy skin smoothing feel to it if that makes sense but anyway i'm going to show you these as we go along anyway so you don't have to remember this i'm just cantering over the ground here um so the next texture is metallic and there is a metallic texture as well and that is just again really really densely packed very very smooth super full coverage opaque payoff you can either dust it as a kind of wash of shine or you can put it on with fingers again to give you that more if you're going to up the ante up the glamour then you can absolutely bring that in so next texture is called luster this is it still has the full opacity and payoff of the metallics but the pearls are smaller. So densely packed, tiny, tiny pearls, very, very smooth. And the result is, I guess, more like what the kind of light and reflection you would get from looking at pearls. So it's that really pearlized, lustrous sheen. Also within this collection is the luminous texture, and that is more of a medium payoff in a semi-transparent base. So it still has payoff, but it's not as much as the others. And this can either be used applied with fingers, in which case it will give you a really almost wet look, glossy shine to the lids, or you can apply with a brush. And it has quite a mixture of small and larger glittery pearls, quite spaced out. So you will get more of that kind of glittery shine to the lids. The final texture is top coat and this is a completely transparent base. So what you have is just the multicolored glittery pearls within a transparent base. So it's really nice just a little dab at the inner corner or you can put it anywhere just to accent little bits of the makeup. So you could put a little bit along the lash line or you know, coming up sort of into the socket line and it's it's very, very subtle. So I don't know which palette to start with because I love them all, I'm desperate to show you them all, but in no particular order, I'm going to show you first Cinnabar. And my inspiration behind this color story is, was very much the same as my inspiration behind my Cinnabar Velvet lipstick. And that is those ancient natural pigments that come from the earth. And these are the pigments that were used for the first forms of makeup, of pottery, and of art. So this, as you can see, is a really rich composition of warm base shades, from the light caramels and tans to intense, deep earthy browns and lustrous bronzes. So it's up to you whether you use a primer first. I'm just gonna put a layer over there. Then I'm going to start with the shade Raw Sienna. So this is the lighter shade in the palette, which is a light caramel. I'm gonna use this with fingers, but you can actually use a brush, obviously. This for me is actually quite close to my skin tone. So in terms of who would suit this palette, I'd say it depends what you like, obviously. Preference comes into it. But certainly it would look amazing with blue eyes, green eyes, grey eyes, because it's warm. I mean, I still like it with my brown eyes, so you don't have to follow that at all. Um, certainly if you do have warm undertones in your skin as well, it would be really good. But having said that, I don't think I particularly have warm undertones, although I use a, a warm base, a warmer base than my skin. I hesitate to be prescriptive about who should use this palette when it really is about, if you love these colors, you can make them work. You can use a brush, I'll show you a brush as well. But you can see how easy they are. They don't require much blending at all. So I'm starting with that all over. And I feel like this palette can work day or night, so, for example, I often wear this palette during the day and what I'll do is I'll add maybe a little bit of deep ochre, which is more of the warm toned brown. And I just start to bring that up. This is a velvet texture. I'm, I love this texture and it's so smoothing. It's a really nice one as well, just to use with fingers. It's almost, they're almost like eye paints because it has that really creamy feel it's really, really nice across the lid because it offers a very smoothing, skin smoothing look, which sometimes with mattes, you know, as you start to build up the colors, they can start to look a bit dry, but this one is really smoothing. So it, I'd say it's kind to the lids. 
I'm now going to go in with the deeper shade, which is Fired Earth. This again is a seamless matte, um, which is a really, really dark brown. I'm just going to put it into the roots of my lashes in a minute, but I'm just going to build it up at the outer edge. And really, if I was just doing a day look, I'd be totally happy with kind of where I am. So I'm just mixing Deep Okra, which is my velvet with Fired Earth. Those two shades really that I used on the top together, just to slightly smoke up. So I've just added some mascara and to finish my more natural look, I'm just gonna use my little finger and add a touch of shimmer. This is a top coat, so it's actually completely transparent, doesn't have any pigment in the base, and it's just a sprinkling of light gold sparkles. So if I was doing something which was, I wanted a more, less, I guess, full on effect, full glam effect, I might just do that. But now I am actually gonna dial this up. So I'm going to go in with Bronzite, which is one of the metallics, and just show you how strong some of the metallics can be, particularly if you use fingers for them. If you use a brush, you can get a much lighter finish, more of a sparkly sheen. But if you go in with fingers, then you'll get a really full pigment. And these are really smooth metallics. And again, they don't feel like they need a lot of blending. In with Fired Earth on the other eye. So I'm just building some intensity. Fired Earth is a seamless matte, so that's going to be nice and easy to blend. Oh my god, I've given myself such sleepless nights over these names. I want them to be so perfect in every palette. Every single shade has given me a sleepless night. But I'm really happy with what I've come up with. And each one kind of, I feel like, really reflects the colour. I'll show you one in a minute, which I've called Lost Summer, which is more of a copper in this palette. And I thought that feeling at the end of the summer when it's like, that kind of coppery sky. I feel like that completely summed up that kind of feeling. I'm actually gonna use Lost Summer now, which as I say is more of a bro more of a coppery color. So unlike Bronzite, which is definitely a warm bronze, Lost Summer has that pinky coppery vibe. I don't know if you can see that. I love this color. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go back in with Deep Okra, which is the slightly more ready brown colour. There are just so many different looks you can do. I'm trying to... I have a feeling this film's going to turn into the Lord of the Rings of makeup tutorials. So I may have to, with the next few palettes, just do the look a little bit faster. So now I'm just going to go back in with Fired Earth. I want to build up that colour at the lash line, especially at the outer upper lashes. So there you go, that's two looks with my Cinnabar palette. The first one more natural, and this one is more ramped up and I'm actually using all six shades. I mean, you can apply it in so many, the, the possibilities are endless. And um, hopefully that also demonstrated just how easy they are to blend. I mean, for non-makeup artists who, are used to kind of buffing and buffing and buffing away, you really don't need to do that. And there's minimal dropout as well. So the next palette is called Myth. This one is partially inspired by my Myth lip color, but also I'm particularly fascinated with this idea that a new color came into the public consciousness. Can you imagine that now? Like suddenly a new color is invented and we're all wearing it in our clothes and in our makeup. I mean, no, you can't imagine it because it probably never ever happen again. But that's exactly what happened in the 1850s when a dye was discovered, a purple dye, and suddenly this went everywhere. It was in clothes, it was in housing, in soft furnishings, and it became known actually the 18, more, well later on the 1890s, by which case it was everywhere, as the mauve decade. And I just have always been fascinated by that idea. So I wanted to really research that history and pick up all of those key colours to make what I think is a really inspiring group of colours. All of the mattes in this palette are velvet texture and you also have a metallic and a top coat. So I'm going to begin by using this first velvet shade and this is called Mauve Decade. As this is a velvet, it's quite creamy. I'm going to use my fingers for this, just so you can see how nice and smoothly this goes on. Just as a kind of 
base coat if you like to look. Next I'm going to go in with this shade called Violet Stone. This is more of a true pure violet. I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm going to do like a kind of soft look and then build up. And again this is a velvet so it's really creamy and that's kind of it for blending. So now I'm just taking Mauve Decade underneath my lower lash line just a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with this shade which is called Faded Amethyst and this is more of a metallic. You can apply this with fingers and it goes much more metallic and more intense. But I'm going to keep it fairly natural. And this to me is, has been one of my surprise palettes because when I was putting them all together and I do love them all, I was thinking, oh, which is going to be my favourite? You know, this one, this one, this one, this one. But actually, this one has kind of ended up being my favourite. I'm also going to use that one underneath. So a little bit of faded amethyst. And this is a really beautiful, almost taupey, smoky taupey, amethysty shades. It's quite a muted purple, which I really love. These colours look incredible. If you do have hazel eyes, I think everyone can wear them, but if you have green or hazel eyes or any of that kind of warmth in your eyes, because it's such a really good um, contrast. Okay, I'm going to go with the deeper shade next. This is called Nocturama. It looks black in the palette, but it's actually just a really, really blackened violet. So it's very, very dark. And this is great if you want more of a smoky effect with this palette. So just introducing more of that sort of smokiness. And they're just so easy to blend, they really are. And you can probably see that nothing's dropping down either. So I'm, I did do my base before, but I only did that confident in the, in the knowledge that I wasn't going to end up covered in eyeshadow. So I'm using Nocturama just through the roots of my lashes. And I'll smoke this out a tiny bit more once I've got my um, mascara on as well, just to show you how that looks. I'm going to finish off with the top coat, which is Illusionism. And this one is, it's almost, as I say, it's a transparent base. So it doesn't have, if you can see, any pigment in it, but it's got like an ultraviolet, lavender ultraviolet effect. So it goes from hot pink to kind of violety. And with this one, I either like to use it just at the inner corner. It's really just the pearl. There's no pigment in there at all. It's more like just giving you that little sprinkle. And this would be nice if you were wanting to kind of bring more of that, um, more of an evening feel really. The other place I quite like to put it is just sort of around this area here, going into the inner socket line. I don't know if you can see that, if it's picking up on the camera. As I say, it's pretty subtle, but I really love these colors. So I'm just gonna put on a little bit of, um, mascara now and then quickly show you that. I know this video is becoming so long. So I've put some black mascara on and you could also add a little bit of pencil would look amazing, black pencil through those roots. I'm going to go back in actually just with Nocturana, which is the darkest of the shades in the palette and just get a little bit more smokiness. I'm just going to go in with this really bright shade in the palette now, which is this one called Victorian Trim just to show you how you can really just add more and more color into this look and it just literally blends itself. I find with this palette, if you start with the Mauve Decade, which is that grayish color, the lavendery color all over, and then just start to bring in more depth, more color, they just literally blend themselves. Watch, I'll just add a bit more of that Victorian trim there. And it just kind of almost melts in, it's getting a little bit more colorful now. So whether you want to go more smoky, whether you want to keep it really simple, whether you want to put more kind of shine on because I don't know, you're going out or something and you want to get a little bit more, you know, that kind of shine to, the, to it, or whether you just want to keep it for a day, a tiny bit smoky, it's just a dream palette. So before we move on to the next palette, I just want to show you how easy it is to customize your palette. So say for example, you have the Myth palette. So this is the one that I'm wearing now. And you decide that, I don't know, you're going out somewhere special, you wanna mix up your colors a bit more. You can buy 
the eyeshadows individually. So from all the different palettes, you can just choose one shade and be like, mm, I love that shade and want to add it to that purple palette. They come like this, so it's all completely recyclable. It comes in a little box and then just resting inside is your, your color. So you can just lift that out and I'll show you how easy it is to get these out. So underneath, on the back of the palette, you'll see that there is little holes. You can use either a pin or I'm using a pin comb. And all you do is just push like this from underneath. So you just take your palette and push. So you can see that once it's up like that, you just lift it out really, really simply. So that's your shade out. Then taking your refill or your new one, because it is magne magnetic, you just hold it over it and it sort of sucks it in. So it's magnetized, you can't, it's not gonna fall out. And that is your customized palette. So the next palette is called Sorcery. And this one is really inspired by the myths, the tales and the legends of the me medieval period. When you think of it, you know, think of the Middle Ages, it's magicians, it's magic, alchemy, fairs, festivals, all of those things. And um, just looking at some of the costumes that they wore and the colors, I really felt it was about taking alchemy to artistry. So this palette has all the drama of the peacock's tail. It really is pure pigment alchemy. With this palette, there's obviously so many dual tones. I mean, they all work individually. You could just do one shade and it was still looking like an incredible eye. So I thought what I'd show you for this video is just the look that I'm favoring at the moment. So I'm going to start by using this shade, which is a blackened gold, um, and it's a metallic gold, which is called Madrigal. There are four metallics in this palette, one seamless matte and one luminous duochrome. I mean, you can apply this with fingers. I'm actually gonna show you with fingers because it's so creamy how it goes on when you use fingers. Look at that. Ah, oh, heaven. I'll just blend it in a second, but look at that color. I'm kind of obsessed with this color at the moment. It really is like, oh, molten. So if you do apply any of the metallics using fingers, you do get like the full, full, full power of the metal. If, you, if that's too much for you, then just use a brush because when you apply with a brush, you obviously soften it quite a bit and you don't get that intensity, but you still get the metallic feel, but um, it just softens it. Anyway, I'm just gonna blend those edges. Ah, oh, heaven. Kind of would love to see this with a red lip as well, this color. Yeah, it's like a chartreuse. It's got the, a lot of gold in it. It's greeny sort of black and gold so that's the first shade on and again you shouldn't need to do too much um blending at all so next we're going to go in with the shade troubadour and this is the only matte shade in this palette it's a seamless matte and it's a deep inky teal he's got plenty of payoff I'm gonna use this to kind of sculpt a little bit at the outer edge. Again, I'm gonna do quite a simple eye, pretty much like the other ones I've done with the other palettes, so you can see them all doing a similar look, so you can see the different effects and the different colors. I'm just gonna to start to add a touch of that into the socket line. And then I'm gonna just take the edge off that. So I'm just going in with Troubadour now with a smaller brush, just to the outer edges really. I'm gonna to start to, I'll smoke that out once I've got my mascara on. So next I'm gonna use Mercurial and that's this shade, which is, it's a duochrome. So it goes sort of from a lavender to a greeny blue. I'm gonna use that one quite subtly. I'm not gonna put it on it can go on really strong, but I'm just going to use it at the inner corner to make more of a highlight there. Then I'm going to use the shade Mage underneath, and this is really a like a light sage green with multicolored pearls. It's really pretty. 
And I'm also going to use that just to blend the edges of the green shade that I used earlier on. And then I'm going to use the same light sagey green colour just to blend up here as well. So I've put mascara on and three or four individual fake lashes just to the outer corner because this is obviously turning into quite a party look. I'm also going to put some black liner just through my um, upper lash line since it is getting a little bit more of a party feeling. So I think that is the finished look and I did actually end up using all of the shades apart from Swan Song, which is the really, really rich metallic blue one, which is also incredible. Um, maybe I'll I'll do another look. I'm sure I'll be doing lots more looks anyway with this palette, so I'll do another look, more focusing on the blue next time. Yeah, it's a gorgeous palette. If you love your really rich dual tones, your more shimmery effects, your sort of magical effects and duochromes and things like that, then I'm sure you're gonna love this palette. So the next palette I'm going to show you is Muse and for this one I was partially inspired by the Bella Poc with its painterly washed world of romance and also of course inspired by those dirty rosewood undertones in my Muse velvet lip colour. So these shades really are harmonious assemblage of romantic vintage rosy hues that can be blended together for a monochromatic look of rosy simplicity, or you can build it up for an intense sublime blush. So we're gonna start with the first shade, which is Tea Room, and this is the lighter shade in the palette, and it is a velvet, so either fingers or a brush. I'm gonna use this almost as my sort of base, if you like. So it's just a really, soft apricot shade. So I've just done a really light wash of that because I want to build that up straight away with this shade which is Cherubim and this is also a velvet texture but it's definitely more of a kind of clay rose colour. I'm going to do this again as more of a wash. And I think this palette is a really nice one for doing like those really beautiful washes. So yeah, I would just wear those two alone for a day look. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd kind of just do mascara actually and have that, but I'm going to build it up now with Vintage Mulberry. And this is more of a deep plummy brown shade, but still within the same world. So I guess this is the most harmonious of all the palettes, as in all of the shades just blend into each other. So it really does give you that painterly, painterly effect. It's more about sort of light and shade rather than creating lots of different colours. But you can see just adding that at the outer corner just gives more of a kind of definition, defined eye. So I'll do the same again on this side. This is a velvet, so minimal blending. In fact, that looks like it's actually done. And without that drop down all over the face. I'm going to go underneath now with a little bit of the same, I might mix those two actually. I'm going to mix Vintage Mulberry and Cherubim. So the two that I used on top. And just do a little wash underneath. And then I might put my mascara on and then you can see it before I build up with a little bit more texture. Because I'm going to add some of the metallic texture in there as well. And some of the pearlized. There's a lot of beautiful champagne luster in this palette. So let me just pop on some mascara. So that's more of a kind of natural look you can do with this palette. So that's three of the velvet textures. So they're all matte. Um, obviously you could put these on more intense and make it more flush looking. But I think that's just a really simple, nice look to do with the palette. We also have within this palette three other textures. So you've got a metallic, a luminous, 
and a luster. So this one, for example, is called Tomorrow's Party. And this is a true metallic. So this is a really nice burnished warm rose. And then you've got the luminous texture, which gives you more of that glossy lid look. And this is a beautiful rose gold. This one's called Love in Venice. And then this one called Taffeta Fan is more of a delicate pearly champagne. So I'm gonna start with Taffeta Fan and I'm just gonna add because I love this colour, almost as like, not a liner, but like adding that pearlized glow along the lash line. Because it kind of frames your lashes really beautifully. And it just gives that little bit more dimension. And then behind that, I'm gonna use my fingers actually to put on tomorrow's party. And this is a metallic. Yeah, they work so well with fingers. So you can see it's just starting to build up now. I'm going to go back in with Tomorrow's Party, which is our metallic warm rose. And just build that along the lower lash line. So it's just giving a bit more shine around that area. And then a touch more taffeta fan just at that inner corner. A little pearly glow. You sort of can't go wrong with just building this up because everything is so harmonious. So each texture and each colour kind of blends in to the previous one. So that is a more built up look using the Muse palette and that's all six shades in the palette. So the final palette in this collection is called Vega. And for this one, I was inspired by graphic optical art and illusionism and really by the infinite nature of the galaxy. So with a starry night in mind, this palette really is about those cool and neutral tones. Everything from light catching metallic mink, luminous silver and inky matte black. And this is really the smoky palette. It has four matte textures, three seamless mattes and one velvet. So it's really good for sculpting. I'm going to start using French grey, which is this cool stone shade. So it's quite a light, cool stone. I'm gonna apply it with fingers. And on top of that, I'm just gonna show you a couple of different ways that I like to wear this palette and some of the different color stories within it. So that's the first shade on. So the shades that are really good for sculpting are either this one, Smoke and Mirrors, which is more of a deep blue gray slate, or this one, Turbulence, which is a cool medium brown. So depending whether you want more of a neutral look or browny look, or whether you want more of a cool toned gray. I'm going to use Turbulence, which is the brown shade. And these are both seamless mattes. So really good just for giving you that sculpted socket line effect. Then we can obviously do a really natural look. You could mix together, actually, they look really good mixed together as well if you want something that's in between that cool neutral and cool tone. And then next I'm gonna use the shade Lamp Black, which is just a black. So this is a really nice, creamy, soft, blendable matte. So this is really good if you just want to create more of a smoky eyeliner type thing and just dab along your lash line and then you can smoke it out. Or you can use it to, if you're wearing actual eyeliner, then you can use this to kind of smoke out your eyeliner more. Yeah, and you can blend it as much as you want. I'll probably blend that one more once my mascara goes on. So before I finish smoking out my liner and do underneath, I'm just going to put on a little bit of mascara. So I'm going to go back in with the shade Turbulence, which is the cool medium brown, and just go along my lower lash line, just to create some natural shadow there. Just gonna do a final blend over the socket line. I'm gonna build this eye look up, but I might start um, showing you the new shades of velvet. Can't wait any longer. So the first new shade of velvet is Velvet Duchess. And this is an incredible, sumptuous, deep red. And this is the red that I felt was missing from all of my reds. It is much deeper. It's almost like a true clean red garnet. 
It has blue undertones, so it's not like jazz, which has that mixture of the warm and cool undertones. This one is definitely cool, but it's much deeper than Velvet Ribbon. So I'm going to show you, actually, on my lips. So it just lacks that brightness, really, of um, Velvet Ribbon. So if you like Velvet Ribbon, but you want something that's less bright, um, this could be the one for you. So I'm just going to fix my shape with a lip brush. It was funny because I was working on the new colours. This is quite a while ago and um, quite a lot of um, makeup artists in films and television often contact me to say about lip colours and which ones would be good for different eras and things. And I think it was The Crown and a few other shows was like, were asking like, oh, can you send your reds? And I was thinking, oh, I really want to make this other red, this deep red. It has that sort of really clean red garnety feel to it. A touch of the matching lip liner and from the eye palette, the shade Supernova, which is a luminous texture just at the inner corner. And it's such a good red. It's a real femme fatale, what I call of a red. And I called it Velvet Duchess because it really was inspired by some of those scandalous duchesses from the 1940s and 50s. So it's got that real kind of true blood red, um, that scandalous red. And you can also, I think I really like it with this, this eye makeup actually. I do feel like a femme fatale. I think I might add a touch of blush though. So I'm going to mix a little bit of highlighter with a little bit of the Velvet Duchess and then just add. So I'm just mixing on the back of my hand. I'm actually using Pink Moon because I find with these really deep reds, you do need just a little bit of colour. See, it just pops. So that is Velvet Duchess as a blush. And because it's such a blue red, you can see that my teeth look really, really white. So it's a good red for that as well. So that is Velvet Duchess. So before I go on to my next lip, I'm going to add another shade from Vega. And this one is called Moon Swirl. And this is a metallic. So this is a, it's like a taupey, minky taupey shade smoky minky taupe okay so next new lip color velvet pompadour and this is my take on the shade that was popularized by madame de pompadour and this is just that rococo pink flush it's a medium neutral pink and it's got i don't know it's just got all that mischief of the gossipy corridors of versailles So it wouldn't be Versailles without a little blush. So I'm going to use exactly the same shade. So just straight from the bullet, a little bit of pompadour to get my cheek flush on. So that is one layer of Velvet Pompadour lipstick and a little bit on the cheeks. There is also a matching lip liner. I haven't used it here, but if you want to, it's like a perfect match and just a tiny bit deeper. So you get that definition, more definition. When I was creating this color, I thought, you know what? That would make an amazing velvet makeup pouch. So voila, we have this year, the Velvet Pompadour Lisa Eldridge makeup pouch. And this is really beautiful, soft, plush velvet. And it is a gift with purchase for anyone who buys three products on my site. You can just add it to your basket. And um, honestly, it feels so good. That's the Velvet Pompadour Pouch. The next new velvet is Velvet Enchantment. And this is like a beguiling, soft red madder rose. This is the most muted red in my collection. It's almost like if you took, for example, my shade Palazzo, which is one of my lucent reds, applied that and then blotted and blotted and blotted and blotted it and put some translucent powder all over it, this is the kind of red you'd end up with. It's such a good, enlivening color. So 
So I just used the Enchantment Lip Pencil to get my shape and that is how it looks on the lips. I feel like this is the red for people who don't do red, who want to wear red but find, I don't know, they just don't like it once it's on because this gives you everything that red brings to your face but in a much more muted, soft way. It's a bit like, I feel like it's a little fairy tale red. So before I show you the next new velvet shade, I'm going to continue to build up my eyes with the Vega palette. Next I'm going to use the shade Lamp Black, which is black, and start to really add some intensity, just working it into the shade I already applied, which was Moon Swirl, and then giving that a blend out, just to start to create more drama really and build a little bit more intensity. So just starting to get more smoky. So I've just put some black pencil through the upper lash line. So that is a really smoky look with Vega. Obviously it could go even darker, but that's kind of, I think, as dark as I probably would go. And I also want to show you something. So what I've done is created two new palettes. So I mixed up my Vega and my Myth. I added the smoky colours to the purple palette. So I've got now more of a really deep smoky eye violet. And then I put all the more natural shades together. So for, I don't know, maybe this would be a really good day look for me. So it's just a really nice way that you can customise your palettes. You can just take one or two shades out of one of your palettes and put it into the other and mix and match so that if you do a particular look, say for an evening out, then you can just put those colours into one palette and have that as your, your new look for that night. So on to the next new Velvet lip shade and this is called Velvet Rain. And it's a very soft, medium rose with warm and cool undertones and I think this is just quite an easy shade to wear. It is, yeah, it's kind of not too pink but not too, it's just a sort of in the middle kind of a shade and you can build up. This one is lovely on the cheeks too but I just love how pretty this shade is. It's very, very wearable. It's like a rain-soaked rose. And that is Velvet Rain. So last but not least, and I put the Sorcery Eye Palette back on for this one because the last shade in the collection is called Velvet Sorcery. And this is really the indie attitude it girl of this collection. It's a medium clay rose that borrows a little bit of that cool mauve magic from the 90s. So it's got that brownie, mauve vibe to it. I'm going to start by showing you it more as a stain because although it's obviously got a little bit of an edge to it, when it's applied quite lightly, it's just a really beautiful natural lip colour really. So I'm going to do a really light layer just so you can see how it can look. So I'm not particularly doing any shape or anything. So that is it as more of a light stain. I know I think it's a really wearable colour. I love it with the, obviously I've kind of made it to go with the palette because it gives a quite a cool look. So that's it as a stain, but now I'm going to build it up and apply it with the matching lip pencil as well. So you can see it when it's applied kind of full coverage really. So that is the finished look. So I've ended on Velvet Sorcery Lipstick with Sorcery Lip Liner and the Sorcery Eye Palette. Sorry this was such a long video but I had so many exciting things to show you and that is my holiday 2022 collection. I'm so happy with it. I love my palettes. I hope you do too. And I also love my new lip colours. And please let me know in the comments what other videos you'd like to see, because obviously I've had to rush through some of these looks today. But um, do let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of. And I have actually done quite a lot of things like swatches on my Instagram and Reels and lots of um, other things on my other social media. So do do check those out as well. And um, yeah, nothing else left to say except um, have fun with the collection.